Hey people, Person here, and today we're gonna start a new series, maybe, that I call Solum Explores. Name might change. Here's what it's about. I like card games. Or so I thought, because I only ever played Hearthstone, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic. I mean, I tested a couple games last year, but that was like one single video. And so I thought, how about I, with my Hearthstone knowledge, would explore other card games just for fun, not sponsored, and give you my honest opinions, the ups and downs, pros and cons. If the game sucks, I will tell you. If the game is great, I will let you know. And this right here would be the very first episode of this series. Don't worry, this channel is still going to be full of Hearthstone stuff, and that's always going to be the main focus on here, but I want to test if this one is an idea that might work on YouTube. 15 second backstory and then we can start the video. One of my favorite YouTubers of the past like 5 years is the Lazy Peon. He makes first impression videos to MMORPGs. And I noticed that people don't do that for card games. They test the card game when it comes out, but then never revisit that. So I thought, I could be the guy who makes this series. Person right here could explore different card games and give you a 2021 first impressions video. Here is Person Exploring Runeverse, which was a live stream on Twitch. Maybe you want to follow that. We will do this every Saturday or Friday. So here was my idea. What if you play a game and you watch somebody else playing a game who is not sponsored, who gives their honest opinion? I think we just let the tutorial take it away. Let's see. Man with a beard, tell me something. You can add a range of cards to your deck from a minimum of 30 to a maximum of 35. So it's like Hearthstone, but plus 5. We get Pyromancer, it's a 1-3. When you play a spell, you have one damage to a random enemy character. So it's basically like the mana frog, but for one mana. We need to find out its abilities, okay? It's an egg. Spider egg. Last Whisper, summon a 2 2 spider. So this is Death Rattle. Ambush. May play this card also during your defense phase. So we now know we have more than one face. And Hearthstone, we have one face that is your turn. It had a last whisper. What do you mean it had a last whisper? Of course it does. Pyromancer can attack too. Let's attack. Oh, that's how it goes. Isn't that like Rune Terror too? We have like two different stages. Um, you move the guy into the attack zone and your enemy decides to block or not. Huh. That creature is charged. It could attack us right away. Okay, at least they stick with charge. We need to defend, but I don't care about my health. Okay, good. Your spells cost one less. So it's Sorcerer's Apprentice for three mana. And we have Burning Dart. Okay. Can I emote? <laughs> Those are the emotes we have. Greeting, sorry. Like somebody mentioned, it's a Hearthstone copy. But to be fair, it's just a similar style of game. We have to hit the middle, by the way. Well, it doesn't work. Number two, we have runes. Looking for an opponent. I wonder if we find the AI. Why does it search for 10 seconds if we find a bot anyways? Well, well. A daredevil. Hmm? An ogre. Why did the voice acting stop? Rune of Wisdom. Activate this effect by paying its mana cost. Guys, let's think about this for a second. Isn't that how cards work? Okay. So we have it down there. Oh, it's like a hero power. All right. And we're now a warlock. That's a 6-1 charge. Because we do have ambush, which means we can use it during our defense phase. You can be like, no. I did not expect this. One of your runes triggers game plus 2 plus 1. That's pretty broken. So this is inspire plus 2 plus 1. It's a trap. I cannot click the trap. I can click that guy. Raging Orc. Does this trigger via attack? Counter attack. So it's like counter spell, but attack. Whenever a minion deals damage to a hero, deal two damage to that minion. The question I have is, if they choose to put the minion in the defense phase anyways, like in the defense area on the bot, and we have to attack it anyways, then what's the point of taunt? Taunt is attacking us. Cool. Maybe I have to block it? Oh, we are forced to defend, so it's the other way around. But that's not how taunt works. <laughs> Whatever. Maybe Hearthstone never understood it in the first place. A frozen minion cannot attack, defend, or move. After it skips an attack, it unfreezes. Do you want to see RNG? I use this one. On that, win the 50-50. Lose the 50-50. And it doesn't hit it. And then we deal 7. Good to know. I still don't get... Why this part is so insanely loud, that's the first part I don't get. The second I don't get is the characters of voice acting when they 
get an entrance or when you play a minion, but they don't have voice acting for like the second, third, and fourth line they say during the game. So in Hearthstone, whenever I play, I know which secrets my opponent is likely to play. No idea in this game. Absolutely nothing. The only one I know, it deals to damage to whatever I play. And we have nothing anyway, so... Never mind. Grumpy Jackie. Taunt and Double Strike. So Taunt and Vinfury. Fury. Oof. Th that's a big oof. Also, one of the traps right here. Where is it? This one. Gravious Wounds. When the enemy hero takes damage, deal two extra damage. Why do we have to rub it in? Erigos the Eternal. That's just Maligos. Last Whisper, shuffle Maligos into the owner's deck and draw a card. Sure. It's for Maligos. This is Sap as a secret. When your opponent plays a minion, put it back in. This is dumb. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. This is like the fight against the Lich King. You're just supposed to lose anyways. But then you get something broken, and you learn about Death Knights. Oh, this hurts. Wait, I have to play it again? I thought that's part of the tutorial that I'm supposed to lose. Let's see who we face. <laughs> I like how this one drop is a 9-3, which was one of the problems on Hearthstone where the one drop scaled infinitely, and you just lost. Yay. Now, I hope we learned something about how to get cards, how to build a deck, and all of that. I guess we don't. Honestly, might be better, right? Why not just give it to us, the player, and we can figure that out by ourselves. Logo is so similar to Hearthstone. No, they have like... Okay, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. You can use the in-game gold, your coins, to get tokens. So at least it's not pay to win. But I never like it when you have two currencies. To be fair though, Hearthstone has dust and gold. So it's kind of like two. Um, expansions. We have cost at an advanced set, which we got for free. Maybe because the game is new. Not sure how it's in the future. Button up here. Tells me a number. News. We just looked at those. This thing. Watch. Oh, cool, that's me. You have a button in there to watch people stream? Number one. First in the row. Only thing is, the last person that streamed 47 days ago. And for us, it's 47 minutes. So if you ever streamed this game in the past month and a half, you would have been number one. Honestly, this is pretty cool to have this one inbuilt. I'm rank one. Just saying, okay. Didn't face a single player yet. Friendly match play against a random opponent. Sure. We got C Brawl. Conquer the podium against the opponent. So we get... Oh! We get a price. Also, we get 10 gold every win. That's nice, every win. And collection. Do we know a card game where you have exactly a sea brawl in your collection? I don't know. There are no pirates in this game, so like Battlegrounds. When you lose a combat, your beast gains plus two plus two. At the start of your turn, play a dice with Morgan. If you win, you get two easy. Random. Is this Battlegrounds? Oh, this kind of reminds me of Battlegrounds here. It gains plus one attack, okay. We can freeze for zero. We can reroll. Obviously, if you just take things from other games, that's kind of weird. The cool thing is, though, they take things, make it in their own art style, and improve that. Look at this. We can see in the bottom right, pirates don't participate, and this one is a done button. So kind of when everybody is done, we can press the button, see, and save 10 seconds. That's a cool thing we should have in Battlegrounds. But let's be honest here and go back to where this one started. This is just Battlegrounds. Or Teamfight Grounds. Helmet. Helmet on Ogre. Awesome. I'm happy. Guys, I'm just good at this. I don't know what to say. Like, I always like to have items in TFT, the three times I played, but I never got any. Top five. Are those triples? No, this is just... Why is this guy lighting up? Thank you. Okay. Triple. It is golden, okay. And we get discovered tier six minion. Left one, summon two beasts. I don't like the man. Middle one. So in other words, we basically won this game, but random, and I didn't get taunt. Show your quest. We got, for 50, destroy minions, play 12 minions with Last Whisper. Now, I don't know if those are weekly quests or daily quests. Yeah, I already spent um, the gold money on a different avatar because I didn't know that I only have limited amounts, but whatever. How do we buy packs? We can buy emotes. You guys like emotes. Everybody loves emotes. Obtain two additional emotes for each of your heroes. Is this one random? Expansions. We had those. But how do I buy packs? Like, how do I get cards? Do we just have all the cards, period? Because it tells me already obtained and the amount of cards. So we can only buy emotes that are worthless and different hero skins. So it's free to play and you get all the cards. But what is that then? This are Ogre Mercenaries, Empire of Val, The Haven, Tower of Aram, Western Woods, and Fallen. So Fallen are demons. That's kind of Hunter. This one is Mage, Paladin. This one is Druid. And this one is Warrior. It's paid to win. Is it actually paid to win? Because it's like one card per class. And then the thing is, in order to get the tokens, 
you can just spend your in-game gold to get the tokens. So if it's a thousand gold to get 15 tokens to buy one cut for your class and you can buy six of those and you get roughly 200 a day just by finishing a quest. Plus playing the game gives you 10 per win and a sea brawl, the thing we just played, gives you up to 200. This doesn't seem like it takes long to just fill the entire collection if you only miss six cuts. Okay, maybe you miss more than six. So roughly, if that is true and you get daily quests, four of them, you can unlock everything within like two months or so, right? If you play more than an hour or so. I don't know if the cards you're missing, the legendaries, are necessary though. Like, what do you think that eight mana deal 12 damage? Is that good? That's kind of like Holy Wrath or like Mask of Cthulhu. What I also don't understand, or at least didn't read anywhere, I will need to do research on that. When you get more cards, put more expansions, are they just free? Or do they want to monetize the game hard and be like, oh, you gotta spend X amount of tokens? So that's also a problem I had in Hearthstone itself. When you're new to a game, and you just click on a card that does something else, whether it gives you a weapon, it summons a minion, it should show you the token, it should show you the card that you're about to summon. This card just doesn't tell me what it does. It summons something. Is like a Gorg Sparrow 5-5, does it have taunt? You know, I'm missing that. Now let's say, let's make our own deck with girl, I'm not sure, Horan, man, man. So we play girl. I think we play green girl, and we make an ally with the blue girl. Let's use our horse the knowledge and find out what is not garbage. Assault is better cry, right? I can't right click to make a card bigger, but he can tell what I hover over, right? Zero, one, gain two mana. That seems broken. Draw also gives mana. That's awesome. Restore one life. No. Trap. When your opponent casts a spell on a friendly minion, return it to your hand. It costs one more. Oh yeah, we can pick blue too. I think my deck is going to suck very much. Your opponent can't play spells this turn. That seems annoying. Your runes trigger twice. Oh, this would be nice. Whenever one of your minions dies, it falls into a parallel dimension, returns in life after two. Oh, that's cool battle with my deck against an actual opponent. Wild growth on two, that's kind of broken. Do we just play Maligos or do we play Big Man? I think we play Big Man. Like, we don't attack anyways. If, if this guy wants to attack, well, easy clap, it dies. Why would this guy attack though? Or maybe because I can't attack then. Right, if I block, I can't attack. Wasn't it like that? I can attack still? Wait, I can block and attack? Oh, that's awesome. Deal two to that. Wait, that's the turn? Okay, my opponent is throwing. I don't want to tell them how to play. I mean, I also draw last here. But I don't know. Feet stick. I got it figured out. Do you enjoy Rune Voice? Please leave a review. I did get my free stuff though. I don't think Hearthstone has that, but other mobile games do. Current players, 34. Went up, went down, the usual. But let's be honest here. For the fact that this game is completely free to play and probably made by like a smaller studio. It is not that bad, but I still would expect like a little bit more for a game made in 2021. That's the current year. I also wonder, the person I queue into on ladder right now, if there are only 34 players online, how many people can I possibly play against? Because there can't be that many. Fighting a bot, the queue is too short. I was thinking so. Also, the opponent plays way too fast. They play the exact same deck the person before played. This might really just be a bot, or it's the same player as before. And we get a win streak bonus star. And we are ranked 2 now. I get the whole part where you have to rank up, but rank 1 sounds so much better than being rank 2 or rank 10 or rank 5. Whenever you play minion draw a card, we don't draw a minion. No, wait. I, I don't want- can I- can I stop? The game just crashed when I tried to get- oh. That's an awesome point to end this. After playing Runeverse for the past couple hours, let's take a look at the pros and cons. I really like the idea that they have a displayed field for streamers and content creators inside the game itself. That way, if this game ever becomes more popular and you search for guides or anything like that, it could be showcased in the game. There's also the option to have a global chat in the bottom right corner. It is completely free to play and the premium currency in the game can be bought with a free currency while also only being useful for either cosmetics and legendaries. However, at this point in time, I'm not really sure if legendaries are good or mediocre, like all those cards seem interesting, but I don't have a deep enough understanding of the game yet to clearly state if any of those cards are necessary to make a deck work. The game honestly is really easy to get into, I would say a little bit easier than Hearthstone even. And while deck building, you have the free choice to choose between not just one but two classes and make your deck between 30 and 35 cards. So instead of being forced to play only a single class with 30 cards exactly like in Hearthstone, you have a little bit more freedom when it comes to this. But now let's take a look at the negatives. 
The game itself is really just like a mix of Runeterra, Hearthstone and Magic, but is worse than all three in their strong aspects. Like instead of combining the best aspects of all those games and making it better, it feels like a worse version of all those three games by itself. Due to this game being rather new, the player count is 30 to 40 people at max online and that is just not enough to play a game. When I played Ranked on the Battlegrounds minigame, I think almost every opponent was an NPC, besides the guy who got first place. Then to the Battlegrounds mode, it's kind of fun, but honestly it's really just Battlegrounds and TFT combined and copy-pasted into the game. It doesn't really add anything new, but it allows you to shop for items and has an end turn button, which is a really nice addition. That however is just like copying someone else's homework and improving their weak spots a little bit while making the overall thing a little bit worse. Then while I do like dual class cards, I don't like the part where we don't have an active hero power, so we don't really have class identity. I know that every class has somewhat of an identity, like mages freeze and druids gain mana, but the hero power is such an essential aspect that it's just missing from this game. We do have runes to cast a new hero power, like as a spell, but you have to draw the card first to then pay for it and then you get your hero power. It feels like a spell with extra steps. And lastly, the game is a little bit buggy. To be fair, it's a smaller game from a small studio, however, some of those buttons are supposed to work and they don't. For example, when I searched for Battlegrounds, I immediately hit cancel in the first second and it didn't work, so I got thrown into a game. Then when I tried to equip an item, the game crashed and when I tried to attack or put a minion into the attack slash defense spot on the field, you have to hit the very middle area where the little symbol is or it doesn't work. The tutorial is very short, it's really just three battles and you can't really do much wrong there unless you mulligan your hand away and lose like I did. After that there is no guidance and you're just thrown into the game, which honestly can be a good thing. If you ever played the Hearthstone tutorial, which most of you did, that thing is way too long. So having a short tutorial of three games that you can even skip, I like that a lot. The deck building is pretty clunky and inconsistent. Same like Hearthstone though. When you hover over a unit that creates another one or it summons something, it doesn't show you what it is. It could have charge, could be a 10-10, it could win the game. I don't know. And then the game just feels a little bit too copy-pasted without its own touch. For example, the attack sound is the exact same as in Hearthstone and the voice acting doesn't always work. They have like one or two lines read out by voice actors and then the game just stops. On top of that, we also have emotes that are just from Hearthstone copied. But we do have the story mode. I like the idea of combining the best attributes of Hearthstone, Runeterra and Magic into one game, but in order to make it work, it will need to look clean and not overly cluttered, have some sick animations and strategic gameplay. And what can I say, Runeverse is heading in the right direction but doesn't succeed in any of those points. If this game would have been released in 2012, so before Hearthstone or the MTG Arena client, I could see it being popular. But now in 2021, when some games look like this, we have high expectations set as a standard. I still like the quality of life improvements they added like showcasing live streams and having the end turn button in Battlegrounds, however if those are the only upsides over any other game, then it doesn't really qualify as a game I would recommend. The game is very much free to play though and the link to it is down below. Let me know what you think about the game and what other games I might cover. I have like a short list of like 10 games I might go into, which I would do every single Saturday on Twitch. My name is Poison, thank you very much for watching and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Take care.